Alright everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video, we're going to be looking at goalies to avoid in fantasy hockey for the 2024-25 NHL season. Before we get into that, as always, the video presented by FanDuel Canada, North America's number one sports book, the best place to be placing NHL bets and futures. And if you're into college football, it's just around the corner or starting right now, you can get into that action as well. The link is in the description below to download the app. Three goalies to avoid in fantasy hockey this year. We're going to be looking at guys in like the 12 to 20 range ranked in terms of fantasy hockey goalies. Guys that are going in like the your second goalie or maybe even that guy you're rotating in as your third goalie option, guys to avoid. The guys you're, who are going to have down years, uh, have a lot of stats to back these guys up. Guys who are on mid-level teams as well. You're obviously not looking at the Ilya Sorokins, Jeremy Swayman, even let's go Linus Allmark now on the Ottawa Senators as well. So let's get into video three goalies to avoid. All right, so the first goalie we're going to be looking at is actually Charlie Lindgren on the Washington Capitals. Currently right now his ADP is 134, so going in those late teens, rounds or sorry early teen rounds right now Matt Larkin had him uh, right around this ADP around the 136th ranked uh, total fantasy hockey player about the 17th or 18th ranked goalie I'm going to tell you why he's not going to be a top 20 fantasy hockey goalie and it's actually quite simple so looking at the last two years for Charlie Lindgren if you look at his season 2022 his 2022 2023 year he had 13 wins his goals against was about 305 save percentage below 900 capitals were 22nd in expected goals against and 18th in, in goals against. So, uh, you know, bottom half of the league in, in, in defensive categories, if you're looking at chances allowed as well. Now, looking at his season last year, something must have changed. Either Charlie Lindgren got a whole lot better in the offseason somehow, or he was a little bit luckier, which I think is probably the case. Uh, if you look at his seasons from last year, his goal saved above expected, he was ninth in the NHL uh, at 18.58. 48 starts, he had 25 wins, his goals against was 267, a 9.11 save percentage. Capitals, very similar defensive numbers as the 2022-23 season. 21st in expected goals against, and actually 16th in goals against because they had such good goalie play from Charlie Lindgren there kind of filling in. So, how do we kind of gauge this? Is Charlie Lindgren going to put up these same numbers that he did last year? He Last year finished as the 13th ranked or 13th best fantasy hockey goalie in terms of points scored. Let's look at Darcy Kemper here. I think this is a pretty good and telling case. Darcy Kemper, if you're looking at his 2023 season as the full starter, he had 56 starts, 287 goals against, 909 save percentage. He was 15th in goal saved above expected that year. You know, similar numbers to Charlie Lindgren. Charlie Lindgren's numbers were obviously a little bit better. Charlie Lindgren also led the NHL in shutouts with six, tied with a couple other guys that we might be touching on as well. So, you look at Darcy Kemper's season last year, much different, obviously. It was 69th in goal saved above expected in 2024. He had 30 starts. Obviously, Lindgren ended up taking that job from him. 331 goals against and an 890 save percentage. So his save percentage dropped about 20 points and his goals against dropped about 50 points or 40 points. So is Lindgren on that same path? He's a little bit younger, obviously less wear and tear. He hasn't played for as many teams. He's really only played for a couple and this is his full real opportunity. He didn't really get a full test in Montreal. So is this going to happen to Charlie Lindgren? And one thing I have noticed after Braden Holpe, so past the 2020 uh, season, if you look at goalies that have played for the Capitals, they've had one good year and then they fall off. Samsonov's the same case. Vanacek was a similar case, had a good year, but then also went to New Jersey. Darcy Kemper, perfect case there, having a good year uh, to the year prior we just saw, and then a shit year last year. So is Lindgren on that same path? You also have to remember, is Logan Thompson going to have a factor in his fantasy production? I, I think he definitely will. Logan Thompson comes in as the backup, had a pretty solid year last year, filled in for Aiden Hill, was injured a whole lot. So this could be a, an even start path, like a 40-40 almost, maybe a 45 uh, like 35 split if, if you want to go there as well. ESPN has uh, Charlie Lindgren as the 11th best goalie. Now that's based on fantasy projections. That's ahead of Bobrovsky and Markstrom. Don't know how they get those projections, but that is just so incredibly wrong. I am not high on Charlie Lindgren this year. Uh, and as we get into the next goalie, it'll kind of make even more sense. But Charlie Lindgren this year, after six shutouts, a career year, you know, a Washington team that you might have thought have gotten better defensively, adding guys like Matt Roy and even Jacob Chikrin, but those guys aren't... Matt Roy is definitely a little bit more defensive. I think Gavrikov actually made Matt Roy look a little bit better last year uh, than he actually was. Playing with, in, in terms of Jacob Chikrin, I think he's pretty solid and, and will obviously ben, be beneficial to this Capitals team. I just don't see Charlie Lindgren being a top five, 15 fantasy hockey goalie, despite all the offseason moves that Washington made and because of how high people are in Washington. Too. Okay, so the next guy we're going to be talking about is Connor Ingram, former Arizona Coyotes goalie, obviously now Utah, didn't get traded. The, there's obviously this uh, a move from Arizona over to Utah, if you weren't aware of that. So looking at 
if you kind of start to see a theme here between some of these goalies, Charlie Ingram had six six shutouts last year. Connor Ingram also had six shutouts last year. Connor Ingram is also a guy who I think we're going to see a lot of regression this year. And I bring up shutouts because there is a telling stat. If you look at the last two years, let's look at the 2022-23 shutout leaders, okay? So not this season, the season before. Ilya Sorokin, six shutouts. Worst year of his career in 2024, by far, got pulled pretty much for Semyon Varlamov in the playoffs and in the later parts of the season to make the playoffs. Darcy Kemper in 2023 had five shutouts as well for the Washington Capitals in those 50-plus starts. He had his worst year of his career uh, last year with the Capitals as well uh, when he made at least 30 starts. Alexander Yorgiev, five shutouts in 2023, also had his first or Really bad season with the Avalanche. I know you might not think that because he had a bunch of wins, but his uh, goals against w was above three. His save percentage was also below 900, I believe. Jake Ottinger, five shutouts in 2023, also had a down year last year. Really struggled at home. A guy I think can bounce back this season. And you're like, oh, well, that's just one year. Let's look back at the season before that. Jacob Markstrom had nine shutouts in 2022, which is actually incredible. After that, worst year of his career as well. The only season he's ever had where he's made at least 30 starts, where his save percentage was below 900, and that was in the 2023 season. Igor Shosturkin, six shutouts in the 2022 campaign. Hard to say his worst year because he's just really good, but his goals against went from 2.07 that year. The next year went to 2.5. Save percentage dropped about 20 points as well from 935 to 916. And then my favorite guy to use for this example as of right now, Jack Campbell. Five shutouts in 2022. We all know what happened the next year after he left Toronto with Edmonton. Horrible numbers. Three, four goals against, 870 save percentage, something along along those uh, those numbers right, th right there, excuse me, in about 30 starts, uh, 30 plus starts for Edmonton. So there's a theme there. When guys, especially when you see guys who aren't supposed to be at the top of the leaderboard in terms of shutouts, they tend to have regression years because shutouts can be a little bit fluky, obviously. So Connor Ingram is a prime example for that as well. Arizona, or sorry, Utah, last year was 27th in expected goals against, 25th in goals against, 25th in high danger chances allowed. That's a lot of pressure on, on Connor Ingram as well. Connor Ingram was 10th in high danger save percentage last year. I think one of the reasons why he excelled so much was because of that stat right there. The year before that, he was 32nd at 817. So again, a little bit of an anomaly because that's a really big jump. He was also 13th in goal saved above expected last season, the year before that. He was 21st. So he also got really hot at the beginning of the year. But from February 1st to the end of the season, he was 33rd out of 41 qualified goalies in save percentage at 890 and 37th in goals against at 346. So huge drop off from the first and second half of the season there too. And now you look at the additions for Utah, Sergachev, John Marino, Ian Cole to help on the defensive side of things. A very young offensive core as well, which I don't think will make a huge difference in how they play defensively right now. But for the defenseman, Sergachev is a, is a pretty solid add, I will say. However, out of 273 defensemen who played last, at least 100 minutes last season, Sergachev finished 209th in on ice expected goals against per game. So when he was on the ice, now Tampa Bay as a whole didn't do a great job of this. And I think actually, if you look at a lot of those numbers a little bit deeper, a lot of those numbers rely on Victor Hedman not being the best defenseman out there uh, when he's playing now. He does a lot of things in the offensive zone that made me make up for it. But defensively, you know, he might be getting a little bit slower now. He is absolutely massive. So Sergachev's most frequent two partners last year, Darren Radish and Eric Chernak. Playing with Radish in five on five, they scored five goals, gave up 16. Playing with Chernak, they scored eight, gave up 14. So he was in the negatives when he was on the ice a lot most of the time, playing with, with any defenseman on that Lightning team. Going over to Utah, I, I don't really see how that's going to change. Sure, you're going to be playing on that top pair, but he was playing in the top pair, or if not part, you can go 1A, 1B with Sergachev and Hedman, those two guys being split up. So I don't know how much of a difference he's going to make. John Marino, similar thing. Very solid at a relatively young age of 27. Uh, I think his numbers last year are are quite volatile because he played a lot with Kevin Ball, who I thought made his numbers look a lot better. But then all the other numbers that John Reno has playing with the Devils, you got to remember the Devils were bottom three in the NHL in team save percentage last season. Um, so that doesn't help Marino as well. So I think Marino's a solid ad, but is he going to make a huge difference to make Connor Ingram and even Carol Vimelka, the other backup on, Air, uh, on Utah, a, a, are, is he going to be the difference maker to make Connor, Ing Connor Ingram a 15th ranked fantasy hockey goalie again? I don't think so. I don't think so, especially if he is splitting time with Vimelka. Again, you have to be very careful with these like split backfields, if you want to call it from fantasy football. It's kind of a lot of teams are doing this now to save their best goalie for the playoffs, even though, I mean, Utah is not making the playoffs. So who, who are we kidding here? Um, but yeah, if Ingram gets hurt, 
or if Amelka gets really hot for like a, a month, two months stretch, he could end up taking over a bulk of the starts. And then what? You drafted a guy to be your second, you know, 2.5 goalie or 2B goalie, and he's getting a start every like four days. Five days. You know, you obviously don't want that. And I think Connor Ingram is a prime candidate for that this year. All right, and the last goalie to avoid in your drafts is Tristan Jari. His ADP right now is about 141. So very similar to Charlie Lindgren uh, in that right, that 18, 19, maybe 20th uh, ranked fantasy hockey goalie for the upcoming season. He finished 22nd in points last year amongst goalies, which is actually a, this that's worse than Ingram and Lindgren, considering they all had 48 starts. So you would have thought he would have been a little bit higher, but he didn't really capitalize on a lot of wins. He was his record was 19, 25, and five. So he had a losing record. His backup Alex and Elkovich actually did have a winning record. It was, I believe it was 18, seven and seven. So I mean, he did lose a lot of games in overtime, but uh, still better than what Jari kind of put up in terms. Terms of a winning percentage. Uh, now the Penguins, for one thing, they started off as definitely a worse defensive team, uh, and they definitely got a little bit better. You know, a little bit familiar, a little bit more familiar familiarity. Excuse me, within that decor, I think certainly helped them because they finished right in the middle of the pack of pretty much all uh, important defensive categories. Expected goals against, they were 16th. Goals against, they were 13th. Uh, and then high danger chances allowed, you know, 13. So top 15, a lot of the uh, in those two stats, which is very solid. Looking at the two goalies from last year for Pittsburgh, Nedeljkovic, 33 starts, as I mentioned, 18, seven and seven was his record. A 297 goals against average and 902 save percentage. He is 28 years old. That is important, and I will come back to that. Tristan Jari, 40 games, 40 games started for Pittsburgh or sorry, 48 games started for Pittsburgh last year, 19-25 and 5, a 291 goals against, and a 903 save percentage. He is 29 years old. So these guys, surprisingly to probably a lot of people, considering Jari's been in the NHL a lot longer than Adelkovic, um, they're very similar or close in age. I can just see this being a main split this year, which is the same cause for concern for these other goalies uh, that I've already mentioned in Connor Ingram and um, Charlie Lindgren. I could see it being a main split. Pittsburgh just invented, invested two years in Nedeljkovic and about $5 million as well. Obviously, Jari makes that almost or and more per year uh, with his cap hit being above five million. But still, you're investing that money in a brand new signing. I'm sure he's going to get again probably 30 starts this year, which will hurt Jari's production and fantasy production as well. Uh, I think you know we're not the tail end of Jari's career, but I think we've almost seen his best hockey. I can't really see him getting that much better. He kind of peaked a little bit early, and especially with what you have defensively for Pittsburgh. Sure, they picked up, you know, Aho uh, from the Islanders, but you're looking at this team as well. The youngest defenseman on this team is Marcus Peterson at 28 years old. Their average age is about 31 or 32. Then you have your oldest defenseman in Eric Carlson and Latang, the two guys you're going to rely on the most. H how is that going to fare this year with, with a team that's, sure, they're adding some young pieces. Obviously, they just got Rutger McGroarty, but... How much is that going to have an impact on these on these goalies that you're taking? So the, the cause for concern is also for Nedeljkovic, but taking Tristan Jari that early uh, in as your as I mentioned, 2B goalie or your second goalie, even if that, I think there's much better goalies on the board that have a lot higher upside. And just to kind of hone in on these this defensive unit for the Penguins, Eric Carlson was actually very solid last year defensively. I would have thought it would have been all offensive numbers, but every pair that he played with, he made them better offensively and defensively. Maybe because they have just dictated roles when you're playing with Eric Carlson. Chris Letang, not the same thing. The biggest, the most uh, defenseman that Chris Letang was paired up with last year was Ryan Graves. They played 400 plus minutes together on the ice. Went on the ice, Pittsburgh scored 17 goals and gave up 14. Awesome. They're in the positives. That's what you want to see. However, if you look a little bit deeper, their on ice save percentage was 930. So when they're on the ice, Nedeljkovic and Jari were standing on their heads. But they had, as a group, um, or as a pair, excuse me, the worst expected goals against, allowing the most chances per game and the most high danger chances per game while on the ice together, their goalie just bailed them out. What, what if that doesn't happen this year? What if, you know, it's a little bit more split? This defensive pairing could look a lot worse and they could end up getting split up. However, I think last year these goalies made the defense look a little bit better than they actually are. And I think we're going to see Pittsburgh's defensive unit fall down a little bit, regress a little bit, and the goalies kind of in that same sense regress in fantasy hockey production. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. Let me know if I missed any goalies or goalies that you want me to touch on. I could do a deep dive like I did with these three as well. Tons of more fantasy hockey content coming out as the season comes around here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.